Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and there's been a strange phenomenon in recent years surrounding Medusa of Greek mythology, where feminists are rewriting history, rewriting mythology to suit their own warped narratives, and it's a very strange thing that I've been noticing for a very long time now. It's come back up to the forefront with the Percy Jackson series currently on Disney+, and partially on Hulu for some reason. I haven't seen the show. I have zero interest in it because unlike a lot of other people, I'm not a fan of the book series. I really dislike them to a strong degree because Greek mythology means a lot to me on a personal and even a cultural level. And I've studied this to a large extent. I've even published two books in the Greek mythology genre. So I am relatively familiar with Greek mythology as a whole. Obviously, I'm not a professor. I don't have any official education in it, but I know far more than the average person. So I just want to go over some misconceptions of Medusa, especially in how it's been portrayed by modern feminists. So this all came from this interview with Rick Riordan, where he said in the original books, he did not explore Medusa's character because the title character lacked the bandwidth for deconstructing the patriarchy. And that's the heart of the weird misconception surrounding Medusa in recent years is this idea that she's a victim of the patriarchy. And there's all sorts of feminist icon, feminist role model narratives being made around her because of this false assumption. Now for the actual mythology, I want to get things out of the way. In the original Greek myth, the primary Greek myth, at least, she was just a monster, like any other, born into a family of monsters, a gorgon, and nothing more, no different than the Nemean lion or the Chimera. So she had no identity particularly of her own. She wasn't cursed. She wasn't a victim of anything. She was just born to be a monster. And that's a very common thing in Greek mythology. She just looked more human than a lot of the other monsters that heroes were to counter throughout the myth. So if this is a Greek mythological story as Rick Riordan claims it is that should be the version of the story that is depicted but that's not the case he decided to go with Ovid's version of the story a Roman retelling from several centuries after the original Greek myth those are the two primary stories of Medusa from back in the day the two primary origins of course there's a couple other little ones but those are the primary ones Orvids is the one that more people are familiar with, with her having a sexual relationship with Poseidon in the temple of Athena, while Athena was Poseidon's rival, most likely in their debate, their battle over the patronage of Athens, the city. And of course, Athena couldn't take retribution against Poseidon directly because that was Olympian law. So she took out her anger upon Medusa and cursed her. Yes, that sucks. Under some versions of the story, other versions say she's doing intentionally. Other versions say she's also mocked Athena. She's betrayed Athena, stuff like that. But regardless, that sucks for Medusa. That would make her a victim to a certain extent, but that doesn't make her a victim of the patriarchy. It's a woman who cursed another woman. That is what Ovid, the story that most of these feminists derive their motivation for this twisted narrative, this warped narrative around Medusa's character is derived from. And in that story, there is zero justification to have her as a victim of the patriarchy. And that's still what they go with, regardless of the facts and the evidence. There are also other mistranslations, which I'll show in a brief moment, that say she might have been sexually assaulted by Poseidon Medusa by Poseidon in this encounter in Athena's temple. Regardless of that, it's still Athena who made her a Gorgon, even in those mistranslations, which would make her, as a Gorgon, a victim of an individual, a vindictive person not necessarily of the patriarchy. And then, of course, there's the whole element about Perseus being sexist. For whatever reason, he hunted and slew the Gorgon Medusa. Whatever motivation, I've heard even if it were self-defense, it would be sexist for Perseus to slay Medusa. Somehow, a woman cursing another woman makes her the victim of the patriarchy. And then when a hero slays her, maybe for the wrong reasons, but a hero slays her, it's sexist for him to do so. I've heard a lot of weird theories surrounding this version of the story and even the original version of the story with some people saying that Medusa was originally a metaphor for men freezing up, virgins freezing up when they see a woman's genitalia for the very first time turning them to stone. Inversely, the same thing happening to a man's genitalia turning to stone when they see a woman's genitalia. Some weird things when it comes to people's theorized origins for 
Medusa. A lot of strange things like that. Some people have even gone so far as to say that she has internalized misogyny from her father. Even though Athena was not raised primarily by her father, she was sent off to live with King Triton and Pallas in the majority of the myths. But this all comes from my tweet that has taken off. This is a very successful tweet from my Twitter account where I just say, hey, in the Ovid version of the story that these people are deriving all this feminist narrative from, there's no justification for it. There are countless people responding, some people having crazy over the top theories that aren't based in reality. But a common one from these people were, hey, she she was a victim of Athena, but Athena was a victim of the patriarchy too. So it's still, Medusa's still a victim of the patriarchy. And there's really warped logic that has no basis in the actual evidence from any of the mythological origins at all. They keep citing, oh, there's so many different versions, so we can come up with whatever they want. None of the actual origins from ancient Greece or even ancient Rome support this idea of a feminist role model. In fact, they contradict it quite strongly. One individual even used a CBR writer, not a CBR article, a CBR writer's Twitter account to contradict me and say I was wrong about saying this was the true version of Ovid's story and not this feminist deal. Now, the primary example beyond in storytelling, beyond in stuff like Percy Jackson that says Medu was a victim comes from this statue. This is when I really started to hear about it in prominence is a couple years ago when this Me Too statue was constructed in New York. And I can't show the actual image that is right here because it is a nude statue and you two might not like it. Here are a few brief images of Perseus's head being featured in Medusa's hands. And this is the face of Medusa from this statue. So it's feminist for them. They're like, oh yeah, she killed Perseus in this version. She cut off his head. Isn't that so empowering? Killed this man. And they're so empowered by this false notion of Medusa to the point where her killing a man is the most empowering thing. If that doesn't say third wave toxic feminism, I don't know what does. But one of the creators of this statue said the place where the statue was placed is not accidental since they were judge cases for crimes related to violence against women. We are already in the final stage working in the last each of the sculpture that became a symbol of justice for many women. So this statue representing feminism and the defense of victims against the violence of men was constructed in a place that symbolized women fighting the patriarchy. This is a twisted version of reality. So I do care substantially about Greek mythology. I have very personal connections to it. And I didn't like to see such false notions going out there. A lot of twisted and warped facts out there. So I just wanted to put out the real versions of the mythology out there for my viewing audience. And I'm not going to talk about Percy Jackson. I'm not going to watch it. I had zero interest in it, even if it was the perfect adaptation of the books. I think the books are terrible and misrepresenting of the actual mythology that they derive inspiration from. So I'm not interested, but it did spark a large debate on my Twitter account. So I wanted to kind of follow up on that on my YouTube channel and just say Medusa is a fascinating character with some fascinating stories, specifically with Perseus, and yet none of them support this twisted, warped idea of Medusa that toxic feminists use in the modern day. Now, right before I go, there's this article that I will be leaving in the description box down below. I didn't talk about it a whole lot because I'm not an expert in Latin, but apparently there are some mis conceptions about the translations of Ovid, which some people believe mentions that Poseidon sexually assaulted Medusa. This article goes down, breaking down the actual Latin to say, no, he violated the temple of Athena and not Medusa herself. I don't want to go into that because I'm not an expert, obviously, but I will provide that information for anyone who is interested. And it is fascinating to me that this idea could have derived from a mistranslation of a Roman retelling of an original Greek myth that no one seems to actually know. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Anon. Thank you.